Thank you very much, Fiona. I have a very special guest now on the couch with me. I'm here with Jessica Nifuelon, the old Gwailga there. <laughs> um, now, Jessica um, actually works with us here at Cork Live TV, but you're here for a very different reason tonight. I am. You are, you're here to talk about um, Ismisha, which is a project that you have founded, um, and you're going to tell me why, and you're going to tell our viewers all why now. Okay, so um, I founded Ismisha because I, as a child and obviously as an adult then, went through the Irish education system with a disability. I'm vis very visually impaired, um, which a lot of the crew kind of think is really funny because I'm the one who takes photos. <laughs> <laughs> and because you make such a light joke of it on a regular basis. That's why oh, I, I do, it, yeah. because that's that's kind of how yeah. that's how I get on with things, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I would have had a tough time in school in regards mm -hmm. to getting supports that I would have needed um, and even knowing where to go to get the supports. Yeah. So I found it as Misha then to be a resource for parents who wouldn't have had that information, for students who don't have the information, and as a body to lobby the government for additional resources, additional mm -hmm. funding. Like, I mean, it's actually appalling that you actually have to ask for it and go yep. out and fight for it, really. I mean, our, I found school difficult enough and I didn't have any disability as such. Um, so like, tell us what it was like in school, because from our chats earlier, you said that you were, you were very badly bullied because of your disability um, and one, the, one of the reasons you felt like it was because people couldn't see right off the bat absolutely that you had. And like I didn't even know until you told me and I'd met you three times at that stage so you were in a school situation where you appeared to be normal normal yeah yeah um, but you got a really hard time when people found out that you had a disability I did and I suppose when I was younger it was more so it came from maybe the parents of the kids rather than the kids themselves okay. so it would have been the parents I wouldn't have been I suppose you know simple things now I wouldn't have been invited to people's houses I wouldn't mm -hmm. have been invited to um, to parties it's it seems like something small but I was always the last to be picked when yeah. we were playing games in PE and that's fine if it happens once or twice but if that's happened to on a consistent basis that starts to kind of get tough Absolutely. Um, and obviously then I suppose when I would have went into secondary the bullying would have been a lot different I suppose because I was the obvious different person in the class. I was the obvious person who couldn't see. Um, teenage girls are brutal. <laughs> teenage girls and teenage boys. Oh yeah, yeah. they're just brutal, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And do you know what? None of us like to grow up, none of us like our teenage years. I don't mm -hmm. think I've met anyone that enjoyed going through no, puberty. Me. I put my hand up and say no. <laughs> <laughs> But it, like, it was really tough and I suppose, like part of it would have been, you know, no, you know, you know what? Most of it was because I was different. And I, I suppose, I. At the time, I wouldn't have been using my cane, so yeah. I wasn't. I I probably came across as really clumsy, mm -hmm. really silly, someone yeah. whose head wasn't in it. When in actual fact, it was because I couldn't see. I couldn't focus my eyes to see. Do you think that um, a lot of the bullying? I mean, would it be because you think people um, are generally unkind, or because they don't really know much about it? Because you know, a lot of people get um, awkward around things that they're uh, not familiar with or that, that might appear different. Mm -hmm. Even though they don't seem to be cruel so you, um, by not even asking about it or be going silent or staring, um, you know, they can become quite hurtful. Um, but do you find that when you explain the situation to people a bit better, that they are in turn kinder to you? I think no, and I think it was definitely something in college that like once people knew my, mm. I suppose, what I call my limitations, like once people knew my limitations are, they were quite used to, um, to the way my disability would, I suppose, come into everyday life. Yeah. People are very kind of understanding. Um, but as you said, yeah, like I do think a large part of it is people will kind of target you more so because you're different and they don't understand Standard. your difference. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like they do it out of fear. Yes, absolutely. Because fear can make people yeah. really, really, really mean. Like, and I suppose, like, I'm 26 now, so I can appreciate that now. I yeah. couldn't appreciate it as a 10-year-old, 12-year-old, 14-year-old. I suppose when you're younger, you just want to fit in absolutely, as much as you possibly yeah. can. But you get older, you're kind of less, less of it. Yeah. So with with this Misha, I mean, you're writing endless letters <laughs> to a particular person. Um, what, what Minister you, what Richard Bruton. Yes. <laughs> What are you actually campaigning for and like, what are you doing in your daily activities? In um, the campaign? So at the moment, uh, Ismisha is focusing on a campaign called One SNA, One Child. Um, so basically what we're asking for there are five recommendations that came from a joint Eroctus report 
on special education. So it's more to do with, with keeping special education within mainstream school. Um, so I suppose they would be um, your ASD units within mainstream schools. They would be having a special needs assistant in a school, having standardised um, training for SNAs that's funded by the department. Um, so people have to pay for them at the moment if they are... At times, at yeah. Times, yeah. Okay. Um, and there's no standardised... Um, there's no standardised course for it. Like all the courses are FETAC recognised, right. but they're not standardised. So what you may learn in one college of further education, you learn something different, different. in another one. Okay, so there's no consistency. In no, it, yeah. no. Which people need in education, build their confidence up in something. Absolutely, and I suppose it's useful for the SNAs as well because the the thing about the role of an of an SNA is a in a class is my SNA acted as my eyes because yes. for all intents and purposes my eyes didn't work in the classroom I relied on sound when my SNA wasn't there and it's obviously extremely difficult to go through school yes relying on sound whereas for another child the SNA might be their comfort in the class and um, they might be their person that will recognize when the child may be coming close to having a meltdown mm -hmm. if it's a child on the autism spectrum Absolutely, yeah. you know like the the I suppose the different levels of care that an SNA is expected to give you need I believe anyway and I know the SNAs have agreed with me when I've made this point before that they need a standardized um, training system so the th there's that element but you also feel that the, the, the you were talking earlier that the schools need, need to take a bit of a stronger approach on the anti-bullying policies that they have absolutely because even though you went on and you went to, and did a master's and that you did have a, ver a, a period of time there where you did struggle Oh yeah, and what had happened to you in school? Oh yeah, and even now, like you know, I feel like a lot of maybe issues I would have had with my mental health in later life mm -hmm. would have gone back to um, bullying as a child and as I suppose a teenager because, like, when it's that consistent and it's that and it happens every day, it is something that does get deep into well, your psyche. Your self worth. 100%. Absolutely, yeah. and I do think a large element of that could have been taken out by the school taking more action on mm -hmm. bullying yep. or by a school taking more action on inclusion. Inclusion is huge to kids. They don't even realise how important it is. It's only in the last few years I've realised how important inclusion was to me when I was in school because I was never included but the kids didn't know how to include me either. Exactly because it's, it's I mean unless it's enforced by an adult when people are kids I mean it's yeah it's, it's a lost cause really it has to be enforcing them really young. Well I know there was one course that we did I think it was the National Council for the Blind actually came out um, to my primary school and this only happened when I was in sixth class and it's an awful pity we didn't do it in second in in secondary school um, but it was basically um, the kids were kind of shown what it was like to have a day in the life of me. I think they, some yeah. of them put on goggles, some of them would have put on um, blindfolds. blindfolds. And a lot of, but a lot of them said afterwards, oh, we didn't realise that's all you could see. Like something so simple. Yeah. I think it took like a half a day. Everyone was delighted because we had no homework that day. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you know, something that yeah. simple could have made such a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because I mean, a lot of schools are very um, have a very strong anti-bullying policy. They do. You hear more often not that some schools actually don't. You hear a lot of people coming in saying that they had been bullied and it was the approach to a certain amount of teachers and nothing was yeah. done about it. And I don't think it's ever going to stop until schools make it quite clear that we're not going to put up with this. Yeah, and I think some schools are. I think some schools are really strong on it, mm -hmm. and then I think other schools have really strong policies on it. But a policy is useless if it's not enforced. Yeah. I mean, but you, you went on to do a master's. I did, yeah. Um, and you've had a very success, successful career ever since. You're the social media, uh, oh no, social media boss, I suppose, here. <laughs> I don't think the um, real boss would really appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> so, um, you know, you haven't let what happened to you um, get in the way of you no. becoming successful. And there's probably people watching or other teenagers out there who are in your position now, probably feeling that between the disability and being bullied, that they're not going to amount to anything but you're kind of proof that you can once you really want oh to do yeah it. and like it can it, like you can get really you can get into a really really dark space mm. because you know what you're human and that stuff is really going to affect you but if anything I suppose yeah you know what I might sit down and I'll have a cry but afterwards I'll I'll kind of I'll come back to myself I'll give myself a bit of a pep talk I mean my family are fantastic they're very supportive so I think that helps as well yeah. Um, and generally where we'll kind of go from there is 
I suppose it gives me energy. Like I put my energy, I focus my energy into, into um, I focus my energy into blogging. I suppose moving <laughs> forward, <laughs> blogging. What's yeah. the next thing I can do? Yeah, because you have beyond the blonde, the blonde for yeah. like six to seven years, which is how a lot of people um, would know you. So yeah. it's good to have an outlet, isn't it, for people in your position, you know, a spokesperson. For yeah, because like I, like I suppose I started blogging about albinism, which is the yeah. disorder. Um, and because it, obviously it's something that's very rare. So I started blogging about that and a lot of people liked my blogging and then there was once or twice where I put up like really funny posts mm -hmm. and people really liked that and I was like, this is fun, I'm gonna keep doing this. Absolutely, and it, it's good to be able to help others in your position, I mean. It's yeah, and I suppose as well, because the Ismisha stuff is so serious and it's extremely important, it's nice to have an outlet, an outlet where I can be myself, where it's fun. Absolutely. Just before we go, I just want you to so I want you to give some tips to anybody who says would meet someone in your position so that they don't come off as awkward or mean or cruel because that like we talked about a while ago, people yeah. just don't uh, they're just not educated, they don't understand enough about it. Um so do you know I, I know people who've been in that position and go, I know I came across Lou but I actually didn't know what, what to, say. to say, what to you do. Know, what can we do if we ever meet someone with any disability, especially one that we can't see straight off yeah. the bat, to not come across that where you know, mean or unkind, but that we're just listening to people a little bit, or to learn a little bit about it. Um, I suppose with mine, at times people do see me because I have my cane in my hand. Mm -hmm. So I suppose one thing that I really notice with the cane is that there's a lot of staring. Now, like most of the time, that's fine because you know what? I'm I understand people. Yeah. Do, that's not something people see a lot, and especially people don't see a young person with a cane, yes, which I yeah. a few people have actually said that to me. Like, if you're curious, you can ask someone. Like, I passed a girl. I think last week I was out shopping somewhere and she was a little girl and she had her mom with her and she said, oh, mom, what's the stick that the lady has? And her mom actually like got down the child's head and was like, oh, um, she can't see, so the stick helps her see. And like two minutes later, that was fine. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like it's actually okay to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I'm very open. I yes. find a lot of people are very open. Um, so like, if you're not sure, ask someone. Um, do your best not to stare for the love of God, please don't walk up to me and hold up three fingers <laughs> and oh say, God. how many fingers has am I holding up? People do that repeatedly. Oh God. I was actually really <laughs> proud of you guys because this is the first that I've come on to where nobody has done that to me. Oh my God, that's yeah. actually ridiculous. That but yeah. like, because it's actually, do you know what though? It's human nature to wonder like, you know, oh, if I stand over here, how many can you see? It's yeah, that is not fun. Time place. Yeah. <laughs> so just treat you pretty much the same as they would treat anybody else. Yeah. Questions if they do need yeah, to. and I'm really stubborn anyway, so I'll insist on doing stuff myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I really admire as well that you can make such a joke about it. Do oh, you but know Edel, you know me yeah. off camera as yeah. well, and like I like I call my cane Citizen Kane yeah. because <laughs> he's my little buddy. Like, I say, has anybody seen something? You go, don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, uh, that actually happened a while ago. Someone asked yeah. about the lipstick, and I was like, ask you, Del, yeah. don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> but Jess, we're going to leave it at. Thank you very much, and I'm going to wish you all the luck with Ismisha. All right, thank you thank so much, Edel. You're very welcome, and then we're going to hand you back over to Fiona. <laughs>